In the previous video, we looked at the data analysis and data reconstruction. In this video, we'll show you how to visualize the PED results. Again, this session was assisted by my student De Xing Zhao, and the sample was kindly provided by Professor Jidong Xin from KAIST. To visualize results, you click on the Map Viewer icon, then click on Files, and open Results File, then select the result file you have just generated. By default, there are three viewing windows, so you see three maps. Let's go through the maps one by one. In the first viewing window, it is an orientation map. Right now, the Z tab is selected, so we are viewing the orientation map along the z-axis. It is the out-of-plane orientation map. You can also click on the x and the y viewing axes to get the in-plane orientation maps. To find out the orientation corresponding to each color, you can move your cursor to the tab called Colors and click on that. The colored triangular shape inverse pole figure will appear. Cross it to exit. With the Nanomagus PED system, you can do a lot more than orientation mapping. Click on the drop-down menu, you will have a lot of options to choose from. We'll look at the combined maps later, but select the grain boundaries. Now you see the grain boundary map. You can decide the orientation threshold, minimum grain size, and whether you hide the ambiguity. The next option is index map. In index map, what the algorithm does is to compare the experimentally acquired diffraction pattern to the simulated data. If the match is good, it will be bright. If the match is bad, it will be dark. Let's think about when we'll have a good match, when we'll have a bad match. The good match usually happens inside the grain. If you have a grain boundary or face boundary, then at the boundary, there will be two sets of diffraction patterns. Then the match wouldn't be so good and it will appear dark. Therefore, index map is a very powerful technique to highlight interfaces in the microstructure. We'll skip the imported map and you've seen the orientation map. Next, we'll select the orientation reliability map. In the orientation reliability map, it compares how good the best match is to the second best match. If the best match is way better than the second best match, then the pixel will appear to be bright. If the best match is similar to the second best match, then it tells us there's a lot of ambiguity and the pixel will appear to be dark. The next is the virtual bright field image. In the virtual bright field image, it uses the intensity of the direct beam to form the micrograph, so it's very similar to the bright field stem image you acquire. Next is diffraction. So when you move your cursor on the map around, you can see the corresponding diffraction. After diffraction, that is the disorientations. I like to call misorientations. Selecting disorientations, then draw a line in the micrograph. You can plot the point-to-point -point and the point-to-origin misorientations. For the grain size distribution, I haven't really used it myself. You can give it a try if you're interested in this option. Next is pole figure. You can generate pole figure of the entire microstructure. You can also generate the pole figure of individual pixels. In the next pole figure option, you can generate a contour map very similar to what you can do with EBSD and XRD. The very last option is inverse pole figure. By clicking the mouse around on the micrograph, you can see the corresponding inverse pole figure. Let's go back to the very first option, combined maps. Let's make the first viewing window the orientation map and leave the second viewing window the index map, then generate the combined maps. You can see the combined map displays both the orientation information as well as the index map information. This is a very short introduction of what you can do with the map viewer. There are a lot of parameters you can tune and a lot of things you can try. I strongly encourage you to play with the software and learn more through doing. Before wrapping up today's video, I want to show you two more techniques to visualize PED data. To do that, we'll exit the map viewer and go back to the index software. Go to the Block File tab, select the Correlation Coefficient Map. The current selected mode is X and Y. I'll talk about it later. Then click on Start. 
it will generate the correlation coefficient map. What the correlation coefficient map does is it compares the diffraction pattern of a pixel to its neighboring pixels. We selected X and Y, so the pixel will compare to its left and right, top and bottom, to generate the map. If you select X, then the pixel will only compare to the pixels left and right to itself. You can extend the idea to Y mode. If the pixel we have is very similar to the neighboring pixels, then the correlation coefficient is high and the pixel will be bright. If the pixel is very different from the neighboring pixels, the correlation coefficient will be low and the pixel will be dark. The correlation coefficient maps usually resemble the pencil sketches. In the right condition, these maps can look quite artistic. The last data visualization technique I want to cover here is the virtual dark field imaging. To do that, again, you click on block file and select virtual dark field. You can move the virtual aperture around, then click on build VF to have the virtual dark field image. In virtual dark field image, for the polycrystalline sample, only the grains contributing to that diffraction spot will show up. You have seen a few examples. In addition, you can click on combined masks to create two apertures and select multiple diffraction spots to form the virtual dark field image. By watching this video, I hope you have developed a fundamental understanding of how to use the data visualization software. In the next video, we'll show you how to do strain analysis using the Nanomagus software.